This is video number eight on probability for actuarial exam one slash p. You can see we're doing question 12 from the sample exam problems. And I wanted to make this video shorter, so we're just going to solve the problem itself. We're not going to take a step back, talk about the notation formulas in Mathematica. It's a problem about conditional probability. It's also kind of a tricky problem. When I first solved this, I tried using the Venn diagrams as we've been typically drawing them, and it, it gave me trouble. I, I still did solve the problem, but it took a while. But I actually realized if I solve this problem by using what I'm calling a tabular Venn diagram that looks like a table, uh, it made it a lot easier. This tabular Venn diagram is going to partition or break up the sample space into six pieces. All right, so the problem says a doctor is studying the relationship between blood pressure and heartbeat abnormalities in her patients. She tests a random sample of her patients and notes their blood pressures, first of all, as either high, low, or normal and their heartbeats as either regular or irregular. She finds that 14% have high blood pressure, 22% have low blood pressure, 15% have an irregular heartbeat, uh, and then we get into the conditional probability information of those with an irregular heartbeat. So you've shrunk the sample space down to just those who have an irregular heartbeat. One third of them have high blood pressure. And furthermore, of those with a normal blood pressure, so again, you shrink the sample space down. We're talking conditional probability. One eighth have an irregular heartbeat. We want to calculate the portion. It could be said as a percentage or probability of the patients selected who have a regular heartbeat and low blood pressure. So let me initially draw the Venn diagram as I drew it at first, and it was not such a good idea. Um, and then I'll draw a better one. I'll draw it over here on the right and kind of small here. This is what I'm going to call, quote unquote, a bad Venn diagram. It's not that it's wrong. And you, you can still solve the problem this way. It just it made it more confusing than it needed to be. So I drew a box. And I drew, first of all, two circles, noting that if a patient has high blood pressure, they can't have low blood pressure and vice versa. So I made these two circles non-overlapping, disjoint from each other. That's also, also called mutually exclusive. One labeled H for high blood pressure, one labeled L for low blood pressure. And if you're outside of both circles, then you have normal blood pressure. And then I made a circle for the regular versus irregular heartbeats. And that I do want to allow overlap. So I made it about like this, kind of like an oval or an ellipse. And you could label that R for regular heart, regular heartbeat. Okay, so. Again, it's not that this is wrong, and again, I did solve the problem, but it just made it messy, it made it more confusing than it need to, needed to be. So here's a, a better Venn diagram. Let me make this one bigger, a big box here. This is what we're going to focus on to solve the problem. Um, as I thought about over here, H and L, and also N and N, are disjoint from each other, mutually exclusive. They also um, have a union equal to the sample space. They partition or break up the sample space. Because of that, it might be best to actually draw them as rectangles in the Venn diagram. Think of this rectangle, this column of the table this is going to be, as representing high blood pressure. This one is representing normal and this one is representing a low. So those are, again, no overlap there, disjoint, mutually, ex mutually exclusive. Those are all names for the same thing. And then as far as the heartbeat goes, there can be overlap, just like there was over here. And there's two conditions, either regular or irregular, making that a line going horizontal like this. Label this row as being the people who have a regular heartbeat, and this one is those who have an irregular heartbeat, something like that. And if you think about the information in 1, 2, and 3, what those probabilities really represent are totals, in a sense. So I'm going to go ahead and put the word totals down here. Imagine adding up the ordinary probabilities here and here to get the total for those with, a, uh, with high blood pressure, here and here to get the total for those with the normal blood pressure, here and here to get the total for those with low blood pressure. And then I can also calculate totals across the rows add up the numbers in these three to get the total for those who have a regular heartbeat, and add up these three to get the total for those who have an irregular heartbeat.
But again, the um, the given information for one, two, and three is actually the some totals. Fourteen percent have a high blood pressure. Put a 0.14 down here. 22% have low blood pressure, put a 0.22 down here. 15% have an irregular heartbeat, put a 0.15 right there. And it should make sense that the numbers across this bottom line here have to add to 1, and the numbers over here have to add to 1. These things partition the sample space. 0.14 plus 0.22 is 0.36. So the number that goes here is 1 minus 0.36, which is 0.64. And 0.15 taken away from 1 is 0.85. So I should put a 0.85 right there. I haven't used the conditional probability information yet. Let's use that next. Of those with an irregular heartbeat, focused on the people that are down here, that represent 15% of everybody overall, one-third have high blood pressure. They're also in this column here under the H. One-third of that 15% is 5% of the overall total. Put a 0 0.05 here. Of those with normal blood pressure in this column, representing 64% of the people overall, one-eighth have an irregular heartbeat. One-eighth of 64 is 8. Put a 0 0.08 right here. That's what we can quickly figure out with the given information. Can we fill in the rest of the diagram and is it necessary? Well, let's focus on what we want to find. We want to find the portion, percentage, or probability that have a somebody has a regular heartbeat and low blood pressure. They are in this box here. Regular heartbeat, low blood pressure. If we can find the ordinary probability that goes in there, that's the answer to the question. Think about it. These two numbers have to total to 0.14. So this must be a 0 0.09. These two numbers have to total to 0.64. So this must be a 0.56. And these three numbers must total to 0.85. We're almost done. This plus this is 0.65. Take that away from 0.85, you get 0.2 or 0 0.20. That is the answer to the question. Notationally, we could write it like this. 0 0.20, that is the correct answer. It is choice E on the sample exam. And there you see that we can solve the problem, problem pretty quickly. Just for extra good measure, we can also put a 0 0.02 in here, and we can check all these totals do work if you're feeling unsure about whether it's really right or not. Thanks for watching.